Welcome back to the Team Wild Academy, where this week we're back at Merlin Archery with our resident archery expert Ben Jones, as he shows us how to paper tune a bow. Okay, what we did in the shop earlier was just some basic setup. Uh, this next stage is what we call paper tuning and it identifies the flight of the arrow because obviously the straighter the arrow is flying the more accurate we're going to be. So the way to uh, view the actual flight of the arrow is quite simple really. We set up a, a metal frame with some paper or newspaper just spread across the gap and from roughly two meters away I'm going to shoot the arrow through the paper and we're going to see the shape of the tear that the arrow creates as it goes through. And ideally what we want to achieve is a, a hole with the three fletchings as, the, as tear marks through the paper. But quite often we actually get slashes in the paper which shows how the arrow is flexing or kicking as it comes out of the bow. Now when we take a closer look we can see here there's a, a horizontal slash and you can see two tears where the two fletchings have gone through and the third fletching will be in the same direction as the shaft. So we can visualise here that the point is entering the paper on the right hand side but the back of the arrow is tearing over on the left hand side. So if we were to shoot the arrow over a distance the arrow would snake left and right as we shot it down. Now the arrow would eventually straighten up because for each whip of the arrow it will gradually get smaller until it's flying at a perfectly straight position. But the critical area where the arrow is leaving the bow, we want to try and make that as small as possible. So we're going to make some adjustments now and try and make that tear a little smaller. So what I'm going to do first of all on this is quite a significant sideways tear. So logic would say if the arrow point is entering the paper on the right hand side and the knock is entering the paper on the left hand side we want to push the point of the arrow further to the position where the knock entered the arrow which means pushing the arrow rest further to the left so what I'm going to try and do now is make a adjustment to the arrow rest so I'm going to undo this lock and we only need to make very tiny adjustments. I mean, I'm talking one millimetre at a time type adjustment. So I'm just going to move it across to the left a little bit. That's moved it a couple of millimetres. And we will see if that's improved the tear or not. So second shot shows a, an excellent result. We've got the tear less than half of it what it was on the first shot. And I mean, ordinarily I'd consider that a superb tear and we wouldn't want to try and change that. Because we've got to remember that the length of the arrow, these particular arrows are 31 inches. And for an arrow to make a tear just that size, quite small over such a length of shaft, is quite impressive. So we know if he was going to stand outside and watch the flight of those arrows, they're going to visually fly straight down to the target. But I think we can do better than that, so we're going to have another little play with it and see if we can get a perfect hold in three fletchings. And what we have there is the ultimate in paper tuning, or it's what we call a bullet hole, believe it or not. It's a hole, and you can see the three fletching tears coming out. So within two adjustments, I managed to achieve from approximately a one inch tear down to a half, down to a bullet hole. So that's uh, as good as it's going to get, really, on the bow. 
So I was quite lucky actually to be able to tune that bow to the perfect hole within a couple of shots. But believe me, it doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes you can be trying for ages to try and get that tear. So although I made some simple adjustments which followed uh, the, the point of the arrow to try and align it all up better, there is two other aspects that no matter how much adjustment you try to make on the arrow rest, you will not be able to achieve that hole. So the first one is uh, the technique you use to shoot the bow. If you can't shoot the bow smoothly and straight, you're not going to get a, a nice, straight, clean hole through the paper. So the, uh, the way you grip the bow, the way you draw the bow, everything has got to be in perfect alignment and you've got to make a beautifully smooth release to get a true representation of what's happening on the paper. If you make a slightly bad release or you're just not quite up to standard with your skill level yet, you may be wasting your time doing this because if you get different results, it's because you're shooting it differently every time. Now the second reason, which I haven't fully explained yet, is that the arrows have to match the bow. So, if your arrows are too weak, meaning too flexible, it's going to be impossible to get a nice hole through the paper. Because if you are shooting through the paper with, this, with an arrow that is too soft, and it's being flexed as it's shot through the bow, where we assumed that the point was on the right hand side here, and the knock was on the left, which we assumed meant it was coming in at an angle, it is quite reasonable to assume it's possible the arrow is flexed and actually bent in a position it's gone through the paper, meaning the point and the knock both tore on the left hand side of the paper and the right hand tear was the middle of the shaft as it flexed through the paper. So that was quite a simple procedure of tuning and I achieved a perfect hole, not only because I got the adjustments correct on the bow, but because the arrows matched the bow and I made good shots through the paper. Without all three things coming together, you'll never be able to achieve that hole. So it's worth practicing and experimenting and uh, that's what you're trying to achieve. Tune in next week to the Team Wide Academy to see how to zero your pin sight. If you haven't seen the previous episodes in the Build Your Bow series, click on the links. Subscribe to Team Wild TV for our phenomenal lineup of new shows for 2013 and enjoy the best hunting videos on YouTube.